Greetings everyone, you are welcome to the Nabila Show on Muftao Nabila Abila YouTube channel, your home of exclusivity. This is the only platform where we bring you stories that happens behind the scenes before the world gets to know about them. Last week, Friday, Kumasi Asante Kotako unveiled their new chief executive officer in the person of Nana Yao Amponsa. But one clear thing so many people do not know is that the story to getting Nana Yao Amponsa to head the position of CEO at the Porcupine Warriors started 10 months ago. Prior to the GFA elections, the then executive chairman of the club, in the person of Dr. Kwame Che, had decided to replace George Amwaku as a CEO of the club. Two names were in his mind to become the next chief executive officer of the Porcupine Warriors. One of them, and the most prioritized person, was George Afriye, the former vice president of the Ghana Football Association. The other name was Nana Yawan Ponsa. Dr. Kwamicho was so optimistic that George Afriye was going to be elected the president of the Ghana FA. So, his second choice was Nana Yawan Ponsa, who was the then president of Fire Rangers. Interestingly, both lost out on the opportunity to become the FA president when Keto Kroko emerged the president of the association. In November 2019, executive chairman of Kotoko, Huamiche, met with Nana Yawamponsa and proposed the opportunity of him becoming the CEO of Kumasi Asante Kotoko. Nana Yawamponsa probably was still gnashing his teeth following that FA elections defeat where he was described as a dark horse. He was the one many people anticipated that could become the FA president because he had started out campaigning so early as far as back as 2017. But when he lost after three rounds of elections, Kumasi Asante Kotoko went for him. But the most important thing within that area was who was going to be the CEO because George Afriye too had lost. George Afriye made it clear to the Kotoko hierarchy that he was not interested. And Nanayo Amponsa showed signs of someone who was willing to work for the club. Executive Chairman, in the person of Dr. Kwamiche, took him to go and see the Chief of Staff of Manshia Palace in the person of Mr. Kofi Bedou. He introduced him to, uh, to the Chief of Staff, saying that he wanted him to become the CEO of Kotoko. Dr. Kwamiche was so excited to see a young man in the person of Nanaya Amponsa exude so much brilliance on the campaign trail. And his ideas were well bought by Kwamiche and the Manshia Palace Chief of Staff. Just maybe, if the Manshia Palace hadn't asked Kotoko to vote for Georgia Freire as the FA president, they would have voted for Nanaya Amponsa because Kwamiche was so impressed. Then came the Professor in Cancer Committee that was tasked to review the mandate handed to Kwamiche and his team. Kwamiche was looking out for that wow factor that would convince Otun for that he had what it takes to spearhead the growth of Kumasi Asante Kotoko. And Nanaya and Ponsan was what that gentle arsenal he had in his pocket or that magical wand he had and wanted to throw before the most powerful king to be convinced of handing them the job. So, when Prof. Incontent's committee decided to maintain Dr. Kwamichi as the executive chairman of the club, but added 11 members, they had their first ever meeting. During that meeting, one thing came up. They needed to dissolve the current management team before the board could realize that the committee had moved on to dissolve the board, the management team. Okay? They said there was no problem with it because already we had discussed that we were going to dissolve it and all that. One interesting thing happened. In the course of the meeting, the name of a supposed CEO came up. Whom was that going to be? Nayan Ponta was the first name that came up. Many people had their reservations. A club like Kotoko, going through a transitional period, already had a name decided by some people who had already met him. 
Okay. So they said that we cannot agree to this. So they all, most of them expressed reservations. They all wanted to widen their scope of looking out for the brilliant guys in the market who were all willing to work for Kotoko. But upon serious consultations and all that, the Manchester Palace chief have decided that, okay, if the name proposed, there's no one thing you're all enthused about. I want to give you an opportunity to listen to the man yourselves. So, they convened a meeting at East Legon in Accra. That was where Nana Yawa Mponsa impressed the members of the board that attended. He presented Agenda 2025 for the Pokipan Warriors. That included uh, the fabulous world where uh, fans of the club will have the opportunity of registering their names on the uh, tiles or slabs of the club, their date of birth and everything. And you pay at least 200 Ghana cities for two years. In his vision, he thought that would generate the club like 20 million Ghana cities. He also talked about putting together the best infrastructure, training pitches and whatever that will make Kotoko great again. They bought into all these ideas and then they came back. The following day, the document leaked to the media. When the document got leaked, the famous Opimso interview from the aide to the chief of staff of Manchester Palace said, Kotoko doesn't work with people who can't keep secrets and cited example of the one that involved Oseko for in 2015. However, Nana Yamponsa had to weather that storm and recover. He needed to play the political cards as possible. But the most important political card he had was his intellect that had already impressed members of the board. They went out looking for uh, um, another, another, other people. Uh, Frederica Champion came up, Eliane Amande came up. They also went to MTN. and they wanted to hire the corporate affairs manager of MTN. All these were people they were looking at. However, at the end, one person they were all convinced about was Nana Yawan Ponsa. They went through rigorous processes. Kwaju Boatin Jemfi was one man who was so impressed with Nana Yawan to the extent that he even had conversations with the king about a young man. Despite some of the, the politics that were being played with him, Manchia Dado, he has uh, allies with clubs like House of Oak, uh, he worked with uh, Kobe Jones, who is an NCC spokesperson and all that. So, he's, all these politics almost nearly denied Nana Yamponsa the opportunity of getting the job. But look out for one thing if you grace the event, you realize the most powerful wicks within the current government where or in there. Deduce that for yourself. He needed to work through and win the love of every single person to be given the job. That famous phone call from Mr. Edu Jemfi to the, the king of Kumasi, the person of Otunfo, the powerful man on the golden stew, he told them, you guys are bent on hiring the young man. Give him the job. So they gave him the job. Three years Monday. But before that, he had taken him to go and uh, meet uh, the chief of staff again, Kofi Bedu, and tell the, tell the king that, you know, he's the chief of staff. So he has direct access to the king. Tell the king, this is our choice to become the CEO of Kotoko. And that happened. Extremely easy. The communique was sent out. Uh, when. Uh, the king got on the phone with uh, Kojo Boat and Jemfi. Then he told them, you are bent on hiring the young man. Give him the job. You have my support. Build Kotoko the way you want to do it. And that was how the journey came to reality. So many other things transpired. I don't know for public consumption. But those things you need to know are that the journey of Nanaya Amponsa becoming the CEO of Kotoko began 10 months ago. It's always a pleasure to come your way on Mufsa and Abila Abla YouTube channel. This is the Nabila Show. Thanks for your company.